My next guests are two of the most prominent chefs in town. You know Ming Tsai from his cookbooks, his restaurant Blue Dragon, and from his show right here on GBH, Simply Ming. That looks really good, Jock. Look at that. And you know Ken Oranger from his many restaurants, including Uni, Toro, Little Donkey here in Boston and Cambridge, or from this moment with lunch ladies while trying to improve the quality of food for the city's kids from the documentary Eat Up. Have all, any of you guys eaten tofu here? It's going to be a challenge to not only get kids to be excited about it, but it's going to be a challenge to figure out how we're going to uh, cook it to get kids excited about it. I love that. But you may not know how they both spent much of the last couple of weeks. When Hurricane Dorian hit the Bahamas earlier this month, killing at least 51 people, likely many more, and displacing some 70,000 others, Ken and Ming were about to join Chef Jose Andres to help. They joined the Chef Relief Team from the organization World Central Kitchen, which makes meals for people, lots of people, in areas hit by natural disasters. Now they're back in Boston, and they joined me here. Gentlemen, it's great to see you both. Why'd you go? Jim, my instinct told me I need to go there. We're chefs, we feed people, we take care of people, it's in our DNA, and had to go there. You said this was probably, I read this somewhere, the most important thing I've ever done in my life. That's a pretty grand statement. Yeah, I think so. I, uh, I really didn't think about it until I returned, and I'm sure Ming knows the withdrawals that we had when we came back, the guilt and and the deep feelings that we had of helping so many people, but it was just so touching. And the Bahamians are such sweet people, and they were helping each other, and everybody was pitching in, and it was beyond words what we saw and did. Why did you decide to go? Um, I agree with Kenny. I mean, it is in our DNA. Uh, we are hospitality professionals, and we, we feed people for two reasons. We feed people, one, to make them happy, hence our restaurants, and two, because there's a need. And since Katrina was the first time I went down in Gulfport, and I've been, that was a disaster area, just like it was in Abaco Island. And when you see people that have nothing, if you can give them a ray of hope, which is not just the food and water, it, it's just that we're there and we care about you. I think that helps them because they literally had nothing. Not even no electricity, no water, just nothing. They had one suitcase left. This is like on, in the area of the mud on, on Abaco mm -hmm. and Marsh, Marsh Harbor. They had nothing. So we just trying to provide some hope and, of course, sustenance. And Jose Andres, as people know, is doing it everywhere. I shouldn't yep. say just oh. natural disasters when there was lockout of federal employees. Yeah. He's serving federal workers. I did. We did, no, we did, we did lock out dumplings. You caught, did you do that? Yeah. You called him <laughs> godlike. What did you mean? He's doing God's work. Mm -hmm. Right, he's doing government work too. If I could be mm -hmm. blunt, but he's doing God's work, and and you know, and, and I'm not a, a Bible thumper at all. But if you have more than the next person, your neighbor, and you can provide, that's what you do. What'd you do when you were down there, Ken? What'd you guys do? Uh, we did a lot. Uh, there was so much food. I mean, every couple of days there'd be probably five hundred thousand pounds of food, supplies, water. That would come in, we'd have to unload it, we'd have to put it in the right places. We set up a commissary kitchen in various islands, but the main one was in Nassau at the Atlantis, which uh, they were so generous to give us their banquet kitchen. And then we basically um, cooked. I mean, we were cheerleaders bringing uh, a lot of people that had never even opened up a can of tomatoes to uh, open up. What they open? How many cans of tuna were people opening 5, up? 5,000 tuna fish sandwiches <laughs> yeah. of tuna. I cannot even walk in the tuna aisle of a grocery store anymore. But you got out of the kitchens and got to see people, too. Yeah, and then we would deliver yeah. the food. So we would cook the food, and then we would jump on helicopters or seaplanes. And uh, Jose bought these or rented them with his credit card because he didn't want to wait for any red tape or anything. And he just uh, threw us on these helicopters and we brought them to various islands and, uh, and fed people. What's it feel like when you feel, when, you know, you're talking about the experience, but what does it feel like when you're actually connecting to the person it, it's, who you know you're what? doing this I, for? I thank World Central Kitchen for allowing us the opportunity to be able to do this because the Bahamians, as Kenny said, are such sweet people. They've already lost everything. They still smile and said thank you and, and really thank you for caring about us because sometimes governments or whatever forget about these people and I'm the one that gets more out of it than the people we're feeding. What does it say? You know, you've mentioned government a couple of times. You know, the juxtaposition of Jose Andres who gets to the islands before yes. the hurricanes 
with our government deciding to throw people off a ferry on their way to Fort Lauderdale, refugees, right. because they don't have visas, you know, despite Which they the, never needed one is lost. before. Yeah. What, what, right. Something is very wrong with this it picture. Is. And, what and, what and, are the lessons we draw from... I mean, it happened in Puerto Rico, too, right? I mean, by the time the government got there, so many more people would not have been there because they would have died of, of just dehydration, just plain water and food. I mean, that's one thing that's World Central Kitchen is so good. They are boots on the ground day one. And whatever it takes to get the food, because keep in mind, there was so much debris in the water, you couldn't even get boats there. So you mm -hmm. had to helicopter it in. And helicopters have, you know, a weight, uh, a weight limit, so we just had to keep going back and forth, back and forth. And, and with, I mean, Jose risked his life. He went to... Atlantis to the Bahamas to Nassau two days before the hurricane hit. Uh -huh. That hurricane could have gone south, and he would have been caught right in the middle of it. So, again, God's work. What you get out of this? I mean, it appears a lot from the emotion in both of your voices. What would you get out of this? Beyond. It's just the main thing I got out of it is we all live very simple lives. Life should be simple. And the elemental needs are that we take for granted you just, we don't even think about it. Here there were people getting off of planes, literally mix it with suitcases. I saw people getting off, not even knowing where their relatives were living, not even having a roof to live under. And some of these people were kids. And they just wanted people to care for them. They wanted people to talk to them, to feed them, to care for them, and, uh, and just really, uh, you know, just embrace them. Did I read that you went to an orphanage? Am I right about that? Or yeah. What was that like? Oh, it was... It was tough. I mean, it was uh, kids, little kids, maybe four years old, sleeping on floors, cement floors, with sheets, no pillows, no blankets, and people crowded everywhere. And nobody was complaining. There was no fighting, bickering. There was nothing. There were just people. We came, and they embraced us like heroes. What would you get out of this, man? You know, I, I, I say it all the time. I mean, we were all put on this planet for a reason, and it's to leave our mark. And I, I, I just drill into my kids' heads. You have to leave this place a better place. And if you have a skill set that you can apply that will help other people, use it. Do it. Don't, don't. I said this before, too, in an interview. Thoughts and prayers are great, but food and water at that moment is so much more important. Do you come back different? I know you've done it before. Yep. Do you come back a different person? I, from I, I come back to myself. I, I certainly have pride and I feel like I'm even more blessed that I had that opportunity to be able to do that. We're lucky. We're chefs. And that skill set applies, which is why we always do all these charity parties, because mm -hmm. we're the ones that cook. And that is, that is one of the greatest reasons of being a chef. We can do this. Are you a different person? Completely. Completely. I don't know how or what I'm going to do next, but I've been thinking nonstop since... The minute I got off the plane in Nassau, and uh, there's a lot more that, uh, that I think that we can do. And Ming and I are both so active with so many charities, from Family Reach to yep. what have you. And, and well, let, let me interrupt. The day of the bombing at the marathon, the day, he comes to Blue Dragon that afternoon. We're having a cocktail. It's okay. It's not, can we do anything? It's, what are we going to do? And we said, and my wife thought of this, hats off to Polly, Boston bites back. Let's do a million-dollar event. Let's do it at Fenway because we know the owners, and let's get a hundred chefs, and we did it. That's well, but that was instant. That's how we think. And that was with less than a month of planning. Yeah, exactly one month. Yeah. All I can say is keep doing it. And I know I speak for everybody out there. Thanks for what you guys Jim, did. Thank you. Spectacular. Appreciate Man, it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Jim, Jim, thanks thank to you, you too. Really appreciate it. For more information on the incredible World Central Kitchen, head to wck.org.